Hey guys, why is here? Alright, hey guys, why is here? So today I'm here to actually I've received a lot of messages about you know what's the difference between biomedical science and MBBS because um, the UPU results has just been announced and yeah I've heard that a lot of students did not manage to get into you know um, MBBS successfully and they they've gotten biomedical science instead for the degrees. And yeah, so today I'm here with two of my seniors, which are from MBBS, um, from University of Malaya, and we're here to clear doubts about what are the differences between a biomedical science degree and also MBBS. So yeah, uh, introduce yourselves. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ayin, and I'm from final years MBBS in UM. Okay, that's my friend. Hi, I'm Jenny. Um, yeah. Going into the final year very soon. <laughs> and for me, I'm a I'm going to enter my third year of biomedical, biomedical science degree in the coming semester. All right. First of all, uh, it might be confusing because for uh, for us University of Malaya students, both of these courses, MBBS and also biomedical science, are actually placed under the same faculty, which is Faculty of Medicine. And yeah, so it might be confusing. You know, some might be asking, are they the same? What? How are they different at all? Um, MBBS is actually a professional degree course, while biomedical science is an academic degree course. Both of these courses are actually different in a way that professional degree courses would train and job ready person. Yeah. So when we graduate, we can straight away to be a doctor. So we can clearly know that our pathway is when we graduate from a professional course, we become a doctor. Like it's same to like engineering. So yeah. if we graduate from an engineering course, we get to be an engineer. Yeah. So mm. Somehow that we can summarize that um and again it's somehow goal directed. It's like there's a goal and then you work towards that. Way. But then for biomedic, it's kind of some kind of they equip you with the knowledge, but then uh, further, future-wise, it's up to you to decide whether what field you want to be and yeah. yeah. So basically, in Malaysia, we have our medicine course can be divided to MDBS or MD, but it's actually both the same that we can actually graduate as a doctor later on. So our course consists of five years, really it's two years of two clinical years and three years of clinical years. So, uh, how do we actually structure our course depends on each uni. For example, in University of Malaya, our pre-clinical course we study according to blocks. So, we study by each system. So, in each system, we'll study from ender, beto, and all the all the knowledge that we needed. In that system, we'll learn through uh, learn throughout that block. Whereas, where from what I know, you can doesn't study like this. They study by module. So what does it mean by the module? It means that so they was they won't study by system but they study by ended physio pharmaco. So like for anatomy module they will learn from head to toes. From pharmaco they will learn from head to toes. But for ours we are integrated all the added physio into according to the system. See so this is the difference between unis and unis. But uh, in the end actually all the things that we learn is actually the same. So all the knowledge will be gained, but just the like the process might be a little bit different how we arrange our course. So there's a different thing in UM that we have is we actually have a clinical day during the pre-clinical years, which is uh, we will have one clinical day once a week where we go to hospital to have some basic clinical practice, such as um uh, learn some basic examination skills, practitioners. According to the law. Yeah. yeah, according to the law. And I heard that you have to follow your supervisors and doctors. Yeah. We'll be assigned to small groups to follow doctors in, uh, in a hospital or clinic. So, so basically, pre-clinical years is, a, uh, is two years that we need to gain basic science knowledge about medicine. So more to more towards study, uh, not that much of like clinical skills. Whereas uh, for year three to year five, uh, we uh, we will be enrolled into clinical posting. So it depends on each uni also. Like every posting will be different, like some will be a few months, some will be shorter. So for clinical posting, we will be posted into hospital, depends on 
which uni you are in. Like in UN, we have our own hospital, which is PPUM. So our all our postings are posted in the PPUM except for some minor posting. Yeah. So for clinical posting, we just need to uh, uh, will be attached to a supervisor, and our uh, clinical posting will be entirely carried out in hospital. Um, but we still have some like lecture day, one one lecture per week. Uh, during clinical postings. Yeah, so this is basically what we have in the PBS. Alright, uh, so basically, um, biomedical science is a four year course in which, um, in the first three years, uh, actually, it's four years uh, where you have classes, lectures, practicals, lab sessions, and all. But in your final year, we will be required to finish a final year project, which is where we have to run our own um, research and also write our own thesis. And yeah, so it's run um, with based on credit hours. So for three credit hour courses, uh, we will have practical sessions uh, where we have to enter into labs and observe and also run experiments on yeah what we have learned. Well, for two credit hour courses, it's just basically lectures and also maybe more assignment based. And also for our after we finish our second year, we will have a special semester for all biomedical science students where we'll have to get to UMMC which is University of Malaya Medical Centre which is a hospital nearby where we'll have, have to undergo lab posting and we'll be placed into different different kinds of labs and we have to observe and learn how the, the workflow and what kind of procedures are run inside the labs and all so yeah Alright, so next for examination wise, um, for biomedical science students, we have our, um, you know, uh, we have this thing called continuous assessment, which is basically just um, small tests or examinations um, throughout the sem throughout the semester um, of your course, and yeah, uh, usually we'll have two to three continuous assessments throughout the course, um, and also. Uh, final paper, which is at the end of the semester as well. Uh, actually, it depends on which kind of uh, you know course um, you are taking this semester. Such as if you, such as anatomy, we'll have continuous assessments, which is known as CONUS, and also um, final. While some other courses, such as behavioral science, it's more of assignment based, and there will not be any uh, final examinations, but it's. Throughout the semester, we'll be we'll have we're required to finish different different kinds of ass assignments, and yeah, so um, all of these courses will contribute towards your GPA, which is your grade point average, and also your cumulative GPA. Okay, so uh, for our examination in MBBS, um, yeah, like I divide into preclinicals and clinical years. So in preclinical years, we do have uh, written examinations, and we do have OSCE, like. Um, once or eight, so, um, twice a year. Oh, okay. We have OSCE exam twice a year. So uh, OSCE is an exam where we actually uh, have patients to uh, examine our to, to test for our simulated patients. Yeah, such as a role play simulation. Yeah. Some kind of test. Yes. Yes. Um. So this is during preclinical years, and the different thing that from MBS and biomedical studies, we don't have. CGPA in our course. So it's usually pass or fail. So, and we don't have continuous assessment. Same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, really, you pass your exam, then you pass if you feel very fail. So, but we do have another thing is uh, when TPD is uh, professionalism, professionalism, and prof personal development. Yeah, right? Yes. Yeah, there's a mark that we need to actually, like, uh, we need to go to school. It's like uh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. 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 you know, like, responsible doctors. Yeah. Yeah. So we do have one section called PPD. So if you fill your PPD, at the same time you fill your universal. So, yeah. so, so uh, for clinical years, we do have uh, end of posting examination, uh, examination after every uh, every posting. So it depends on each posting whether we are seeing real patients or seeing the patients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we also have written exams. Uh, for UN, we have it every after every two posting. Mm. 
So roughly that there's a there are four postings in a year. Um, just to mention that uh, examination might be a bit different uh, in different units. So what we mentioned just now for the examination is based on your test. Yes. For for information on other universities, you might ask yeah, ask seniors from Google. Google. Yes. 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 ask seniors from other universities to have for the video like this also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Experience, yeah. experience on you know course, uh, so just like as a reference. Mm. Because you, you don't get to usually hear about all these stories in uh, somewhere else. So yeah. It's like survival hacks. Yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for medic, basically, it depends on how you manage your time. So if you're a more study oriented person, then definitely you will spend all your time studying and claim that it doesn't have any other free time. So it basically depends on ourselves. If I have to make sure that I have four hours of studying time every day, then others will be our free time. So yeah, depends on your time management. And also for holiday wise, basically we don't have any mid sem break. Or we have just one week of sem break. And then after every year, then we have one 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 month to a few weeks lah. Mm. Mm. But for clinical posting why it's just one month, I think maximum. Yeah. And then all the other festive holiday for one week, like Papali, Raya, Chinese New Year. Yeah. And just for mention for the classes in the BBS, um for a few clinical years we do have uh very packed schedules from usually from eight or nine to five. So all these are lectures lah. But for clinical years we don't actually have those Tech schedule, but our schedule is like it depends on when your doctor is. Yeah, we don't have a so, space schedule, so you might need to wait your doctor like mm. up to five pm after that work. Only they will start the class. You so maybe call to a lecture at eight o'clock at night. Yeah, depends on the doctor. So it's not that fixed during our clinical years. So mm. yeah, so it's not that fixed, but you still have to clear up time. Yeah, you need to be ready. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you always need to be ready. In for biomedical science, it's actually yeah, it's just you have to make sure that you're free from eight to five, um, because that's when the lectures are from eight a.m. to five p.m. and in between there definitely be breaks, you know, lunch breaks and also breaks for um, short breaks like, in between classes, right? And also not to mention um, biomedical science, it, it follows the semester timetable um, which are almost relevant and almost similar to other courses and we also have semester breaks um, that last about from one month to two months so it's definitely longer than MBS students So for sure. those who want to get MBS, uh, think about it yeah. <laughs> Because we, uh, MBS never follow the semester that other courses. Yeah, they run an entirely different time. Yeah. If we have holidays, we consider. <laughs> we have our own academic calendar compared to other courses. Yes. So the mid separate, uh, separate all those are quite, quite different. But eventually you will get used to it, lah. Right? Like, <laughs> you will <understand> when you <laughs> And and do have don't have the mindset that like in medicine we can only study. You actually can still join a lot of mm. university activities. Just for MBS, it might be a little bit difficult for us to join some of the activities because like other classes, they actually have free time during maybe during afternoon, so they might have meeting during that time but can't join. Yeah, that's the only difficulties uh, But I'm sure this can be sorted out. Yeah, FYI, I met these two peeps <laughs> in, in activities, dance practice, alright. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you definitely have time for any other stuff that you want to. Another thing is know your priority. Like prioritize those important and also those are more urgent matters. Mm. Alright, next we'll talk about job prospects um, in both biomedical science field and also the um, in medicine. And I think it's a topic that you guys are most interested in. So for biomedical science, um, basically after your um, degree after your bachelor's degree, um, you can actually 
go straight into work, but it's much more recommended to you know further studies into either masters or PhD, right? And, and you can even um, further study into different different types of courses. Uh, just let your imagination go wild. I've heard people go into physiotherapy, dietetics, and nutrition and whatnot, and because biomedical science degree itself it's very broad. Um, and we'll have our own electives as well throughout your studies so you can actually design what kind of pathway you want to go into. You know, we have neuroscience, we have phlebotomy, we have hematology, um, all, all sorts of courses for you to pick. And so yeah, you basically can craft your own um, route or your own path towards your master's or PhD degree. So other than going into further studies. Usually people go into further studies because they would like to end up um, doing research or either being a lecturer, teach you know, new undergrads and watch them. Teach MBBS. Yeah, it's possible. Teach MBBS. <laughs> if you guys uh, would not like to go into academic side, um, there is still a lot of job opportunities. Um, there's a misconception about biomedical science where people think that there aren't a lot of job opportunities out there. The job market is very, very um, scarce. And well, actually, from what I've heard from my seniors, all my buddies, all the seniors out there, they actually um, could land different, different kinds of job in Malaysia uh, itself. Uh, some are now teachers, some have actually entered into diagnostic labs and also private labs. Some work in the hospital, the labs in the hospital. And some even um, went into you know insurance claim underwriters, um, quality assurance and whatnot, um, even sales as well. So the possibilities are endless. You just have to find uh, what are what are your passion, what are your interests, and so you just head into that direct that direction itself, right? So how about for medics for MBS? So um, for medic is basically two years of housemanship and then after that you continue for a few more years of your medical officer which is the, the medium thing I mean the usual pathway that people take after they graduate from medical school and so just now as we mentioned ours is more of a goal directed means that like 80 or 90 percent we uh, go into a medical officer and then go to the specialization pathway and the key rate of specialization depends on what course are you specialized in? So I will not uh, talk a lot about that because that one is like too specialized. So for now you just need to remember that two years of housemanship and then after that you're a medical official. So other than that, there are a few alternatives such as um, hospital administrative or you can be a journalist spe specific for medical field or you can be a researcher or you can be a lecturer. Yeah. But the minimum thing is you need to complete your two years of housemanship and then uh, yeah, after that it depends on where you want to go, where you want to be. Yeah. The two years of housemanship, like you need to finish that to get your doctor license, like, basically. Mm -hmm. So if you want to serve in government hospital, you need to do at least two years of MO. And for now you know that we actually our MOs are actually a contract doctor. So mm -hmm. we are not going to go into a uh, into it. Uh, I think um, the most important part is you have to know what um, you are really passionate about. You know, don't go and do, um, don't go and just study. You know, a lot of people actually study um, MBBS because their parents want them to, because it's prestigious. And well, I think that's a very very wrong way to do stuff. Yeah. <laughs> If you think of entering MBBS because of money and you think that our job is like secure like Tiefang one as people mentioned uh, No, that's a very wrong concept So it's no longer like this So yeah, better to reconsider that Think Right And I think for those who are applying for MBBS So I know that most of the juniors they actually put alternatives like uh, dentistry, medicine, pharmacies. So you need to think about it whether you want or money or not because it's actually quite different between dentistry, medicine and pharmacies. So how you put it uh, as your choices in your UP is actually also very important. 
So for those who are very, very, very determined to get MBBS, and in the end you don't get MBBS and get into biomedical science, you can actually think about it. But if your only choice is MBBS, you can actually, I can, I, I would actually suggest you to maybe go to privates or yeah. get direct intake. So, um, yeah. So you need to know your choice, uh, how you arrange, arrange your choice, like which you need to get in, yes. depends on your own results and all those. Yeah. Well said. Okay, so I think yeah, that's um, a lot of stuff that we covered. Yeah, there should be a lot of info, enough for you to digest and reconsider or even consider what kind of cons courses that you are interested to take. So yeah, sleep on it and uh, don't forget to follow and follow this two peeps. <laughs> I'll link, I'll link <laughs> the Instagram down below. <laughs> Subscribe for his channel. Yeah. yeah. And right. if you may actually comment any uh any doubts. Yeah. yeah, any Ask questions, leave it down. Mm -hmm. And that's all. See you guys next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Oh, that kind of thing is not too easy. So I here invited who and who to hear uh, to clarify the difference between my and Yes. Okay, you not to